So this is one of those videos that's actually been on my mind a lot lately, uh, especially as I've continued it. The fact that I use and love using, the fact that I love and use cinema cameras. Uh, this isn't, this isn't working. Um, I don't know about the scripted approach for this video. Mm, let me try something else. You ever have something you wanted to communicate, but every way you try just doesn't feel right? So you script it, or you add a voiceover in, or talk straight to camera like this. So I've headed out to um, Roan Mountain High Knob. Or actually, it's not even High Knob. It's like Carver's Gap, and it's this little balds that you <clears throat> you walk on. You can see out into the distance over. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to see out much today, just because it's uh, really rainy. Get some Aiden Robbins footage. You know, really nice and <laughs> foggy and rainy. Oh, well, I know how to pick days. Hey, I'm gonna back out and then just have you pull in wherever this is. Yeah, I got about like uh, almost onto the interstate from St. Andrews and I was like, you know what? I'm an idiot. I don't have my, I need my boots and my, I was just wearing like normal shoes. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna wear the boots. Because either way, even if I don't need them, I'll still be happy that I have them. I don't know, this is starting to have too much of that sad YouTuber talks to camera vibe. Uh, let's switch up the music here to give it a little bit more upbeat, but serious for the travel montage. Perfect. Oh wait, crap. I didn't film anything because I was driving. Um, I guess I'll just use some of my other travel footage. No one will be able to tell the difference. Got the feeling in your bones. Make you feel right at home. Carver's Gap or Roan Mountain, which I guess is Roan Mountain's that way, High Knob's that way. We're doing the balds. This is a great place to come. Aiden Robbins comes here all the time, so we're gonna, you know, maybe get some Aiden Robbins material. And then just, S, you know, put some- Q smoke. Q smoke, yeah, and then just add some in in post. We're already at two and a half minutes into this video and I still haven't even gotten to the main point. People are gonna start leaving the video. Okay, how about we do a jump to the talking part? No, but how did I get there? Oh, good lord. Uh, okay, the quick cinematic sequence with voiceover context. Let's do that. Hopefully they remember the first voiceover bit. Rainy days don't seem so wet. Stormy nights don't stay. From the moment that we met, you were. the way. Sometimes you have to go away to find the words you're looking for. And that was cliche words to help prolong this video so I can figure out how to get to my point. A point I feel I should easily be able to make, and maybe I'm just overthinking this at this point. Well, let's stop this ridiculous music and just get to it. I've uh, edited a script for this. I've recorded a script for this video. I've done some other things and I've been trying to find the right balance of feeling like it's not just, you know, it's not just coming from a script. It's not just super prepared, whatever this is, this video I'm trying to make is, but you know, something I've wanted to address, I guess for a while on this channel, I'll, I, even for, to me, myself personally, <laughs> it admit to myself, the fact that uh, I use a cinema camera and I'm not a cinematographer. And I think that's fine. I, I guess the, the natural response would be why to use a cinema camera though if you're not gonna do cinematography or you're not gonna make feature films or do things like that. Well, I think it's funny that they're called cinema cameras. I, I think any creator would want a camera that produces really high quality and has flexible work, right? So even if I don't use it to create feature films, there's no problem with me using it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's freeing to admit that that it's, it's okay, that you don't have to be this. And it's fine that people are this. There's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to be it or that you're any less 
good or adequate at some of this stuff than those who are pursuing film, or pursuing short films and all that kind of stuff. Gosh, I really wish at this point I'd gone into the fact that thinking in terms of categories or boxes of what you are can be incredibly confining and frustrating as it sometimes keeps you from exploring other creative avenues. And it also can cause you to look at others in negative ways if they aren't in your category or box. And that's something we all do. I just wish I had said it in this video. Let's talk about like the industry. There's been a flood of people coming just because of black magic cameras. And even, I would say red. Like, I would say, do you need an Ari to do what I'm doing? No. But can you still use a cinema camera that's designed more for video than it is for photography? And that's kind of where my problem has always been. I don't really do photography. I really want highest quality video. I really want flexible um, bit rate. I want flex all the flexibility that the cinema cameras allow me on different trips and traveling things. And I think that's what makes it opening a cinema camera up with that just used to be just in this specific industry for commercials, for movies, for TV shows, and opening it up to a wider audience, to a wider usership of people who are good content creators, but maybe aren't looking to make like feature films. I think it adds a good element to it and it gives people a really good camera and helps people to even learn more about film than just using every autofocus camera that you can use. Am I saying there's something wrong with being a cinematographer? Absolutely not. There, I love, I have a bunch of friends that are cinematographers. I've wanted to be a cinematographer, or at least I thought I did, I think is maybe even the key thing even in just finding this video and re-recording it several times. But, but the deeper issue here to me still is that of, I would say adequacy and ego. As creatives, some of us feel like we will never be adequate enough, that our work will never amount to anything and that our work will always be subpar. And that causes a lot of us to lash out when we face criticism. And while to get better, we should definitely listen to constructive criticism of our work and talk with others in the industry to get better. And even, you know, to have our own dumb questions answered. So, you know, newcomers and those looking to be better at their craft should never have to endure some of the hateful or rude responses from those farther along than they are at the moment and believe themselves to be in the superior industry or far above the knowledge and skill wise of that new person. Not everyone's like this. Not every cinematographer I've talked to or met with has been like this. I have a bunch of friends that are cinematographers, love their work, love that kind of work. I think there's a definitely the place for it. So I'm not trying to bad mouth that or say that they're awful. I'm more trying to push down some of this rhetoric that's come through some of the community groups and stuff where it's like, you have a lot of these like higher up people who have a lot of camera knowledge, but are like in that range that kind of push down and beat down a lot of work that other people do. Because I think there is a, an ability to be able to learn from both sides of it. Where for someone like me, I learn from someone who does cinematography stuff, because um, I don't do production in that kind of way. So there's people on our Discord channel I talk to all the time that are more in that world, more in the lighting world, more in all that kind of stuff than even I am, and I learn a lot from them. You know, uh, some could take it as like, is it, am I being a lazy video person? I, I, I think that's the, the hard thing in this is that I don't want to be a cinematographer. Does that mean I'm not going to take principles of cinematography and the ways to film with a camera the way you're supposed to to get your cinematic footage or whatever anyone wants to call cinematic footage, which, I'm, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't, I don't see it as laziness or like uh, just like cutting myself short and saying like, well, I'm just never gonna be good enough to be a cinematographer, so I'm just not even gonna try. That's not it at all. Like if I wanted to, I could put all my time into doing that and succeed at it. The difference is it's like, in, there's so much to do, right? It's like where you wanna be in the video world. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna create? And I think that's the point of this video, realizing that just because you don't fit in the box or category someone else wants you to fit in, that doesn't mean that you can't learn and grow and use things like cinema cameras however you want to. At the end of the day, create what you want to and take every opportunity to improve when you do. But at the same time, we're helping them through it. We're not being rude, we're not being condescending, and we're giving people information and helping build other people up so they can go content create and do the stuff that we love doing. Because at one point we were there too, trying to figure it out. And I don't care if you do weddings, if you do movies, if you do travel videos, if you film stuff for cooking or whatever, we can learn something from the way different people film and their perspectives on it 
and different things they've picked up along the way that we might not have those experiences because we haven't filmed something like that before. We haven't done work in that area. Going forward, I wanna create a community that is encouraging to everyone, that helps each other, that yeah, we can have a good laugh about something that went wrong or someone doing something funny. Let's all be better, including me, and create a better, more positive community. Love cinema cameras but I don't really consider myself a cinematographer. I just like making videos. And if you're there too, it's totally fine to be that. But there's still plenty to learn about the cameras and there's still plenty to progress on and continue to learn. And just because you don't consider yourself to be a cinematographer or want to be one, doesn't mean that you can't apply principles to it. And you constantly need to test and learn your camera and use it. To get started, um, if some of you, here's, here's a video right here that's a great place to get started for people who are new and for people who are um, even been doing this for a little bit, just to brush up on a couple of things. So you guys will like this video. Thanks for watching.